Welcome back gearheads. Today I've got updates for you on the Turbo LS 92 Camaro project. What? It hasn't been that long. All right, nine months is a little too long. This update video is a continuation in the video series I have on this project. If you go to my channel by clicking on my name, a gearhead for life, It'll take you to my channel and you'll see the different video playlists there. Well, there's a whole playlist just on this car. But if you missed the last video update on this project, I'll put the link in the description below this video. Uh, in the last video, I did not have the turbo mounted yet. That was one of the big things I was waiting on. Uh, is now the flange you see is welded onto the hot side piping. I did wind up selling my, the precision turbo I had that was a little too small on the exhaust side. And now have the VS Racing uh, turbo. It's a 7875 turbo. Uh, let's see since then you know I got the accessories on I haven't wrapped the hot side pipe in here yet because I still need about where you see that X is where I'm thinking I still need to put a wastegate tap it into the downpipe over there probably speaking of downpipe I did get the downpipe ran down the firewall it's a four inch pipe four inch is a little excessive for the power I'll be making but I had a four inch cat back already and I figured making a four inch downpipe I uh, wanted the challenge of excuse me, squeezing it back there. Uh, it'll give me room to grow in the future. You know, I plan on pushing this harder in the future and putting better rods in it, etc. I already have a four inch pipe there. I didn't want to do a fender exit because it's becoming too common lately. And I was kind of maybe trying to hide the exhaust. So I'm gonna run it all the way to the back with a bullet muffler, but there will be a dump. There will be a four inch dump once it gets under the firewall and dump out the side over here. Let me show that to you. This is the dump I'll be using. It's a three and a half inch dump. They don't have four inches yet, but this is by Loud Valves. Loud Valves. It's a uh, not electronic, which is cool. It's vacuum actuated with a, uh, a wastegate style actuator, and I'm excited to check it out. This should be pretty cool. So um, they have two different versions. One will be boost activated, and one is vacuum actuated. So the vacuum version I'll be putting on my truck. This one's boost referenced so as you build boost it'll open the valve your dump will open get some of that back pressure off your turbo i think it's pretty cool and i'm excited to check them out loud valves if you haven't heard about them check them out they're on facebook and then they have a website loudvalves.com you may have noticed that i don't have that plastic cap that usually goes across the top there holding the radiator in place that's because i wound up moving the radiator forward rocking the top of it forward uh, what two inches I'm not quite sure of the distance but moved it forward enough to clear the turbo because when I mounted the turbo I didn't pay attention I, when I when I was mounting the flange for the turbo I made sure to watch out to make room for the lower radiator hose uh, make sure the downpipe was pointed straight back as I could uh, keep where the filter would be where the cold side piping was gonna go I was focused on all those other things and trying to hold it in place myself I guess I should have welded a mount up to hold it in place test you know like a sample fit but I was focused on those other things. I either forgot about the radiator or just uh, took it for granted. And it was too close. It was pretty much touching the turbo. So I cut out the radiator support and rocked it forward instead of remounting my flange. And that's what I chose to do. But you take that into consideration when you're mounting your own to leave room for everything if you can. As I mentioned in my last video, I did wind up cutting out the battery trays um, on both sides actually. This side I haven't started the plumbing for yet, but the pipe right there will go down to the intercooler that way. Uh, the filter should fit in there. I might put a, I'll probably put a 90 and come back towards the wheel well. But you see, it'll come down through there and over here to the intercooler, which I've had mounted already. Same thing on the other side. I already cut out the battery tray, ran the piping up to the throttle body. This side I already have the piping done and then into the intercooler. Uh, I went and had, because as you see here, I had three different sections of piping. I went and had a guy weld that together for me so I could eliminate a coupler here and there. You know, less couplers would uh, have less uh, areas where they could leak, blow off, whatever. So I went ahead and had that welded together. Thought about welding it together here, but that would make it more difficult to fix if I had to fix anything on the side of the road. I just thought it would be wise to have that section removable. This side I haven't worked, or I need to work on, I haven't gotten to yet because 
I'm gonna have to have a reducer. This is, I believe, is a three inch. I forgot what size that one is, but it needs to reduce down and do a quick 90 to head down that direction. Shouldn't take too much effort, but it's something I need to do on a to-do list. I haven't mentioned the intercooler. Got the intercooler mounted. Uh, let me tell you the, the things I would have done differently here. Whenever I cut off the frame, the, the front of the frame, I cut it at a weird angle because of the shape of the frame is what made me do that. Uh, I should have ignored that shape of the frame and just cut straight down. Straight down would have been better. Would have been a lot easier to weld this uh, piping to. What I wound up doing is using some scrap roll cage pipe and connecting the two sides of the frame together for strength, but it also doubled as a mount for the intercooler. Just uh, put some angle iron there to mount the top and angle iron on the bottom. Tied it into the where the latch used to be. Let me see from here. Where the latch used to be, the uh, latch support used to be. It used to come up to this piece here, but now that'll be secured onto the roll bar there but if i would have cut those the frame straight up and down it would have made it a lot easier to attach this roll bar to uh, cutting that crazy angle there wasn't cool and as you see i wound up pat patching pieces together to close it up but it works it's there it's definitely solid and that uh roll bar should be pretty strong i've seen a lot of people get away with just using the there's like a crash bar here from the factory from using that you could do that also I may have chose a harder route but I was just experimenting and you learn from your experiences right and I showed you I had cut the battery trays out of here to run the piping but I saved them I actually repurposed them because you see I don't have a place for the battery here I moved it to the trunk took the tray out of the passenger size because it was in better condition set it down in there welded it to the sides hold it in place for a battery mount in the trunk now the big thing is uh, holding me up right now from cranking this up and maybe driving onto a trailer or moving it around at least right now is that I need the wastegate mounted and the oil feed and drain for the turbo. Uh, the feed should be pretty easy. The drain now, y'all saw before that I had put my drain over there in the front cover. It comes from the bottom of the turbo here. Uh, something I realize now is that I should have put that drain in the other side. Originally I was going to put it in the other side. You can actually, well I can't get close enough now, but you can see a little bit of weld there where I had drilled a hole and plan on putting my drain there. I'm not sure why I redirected and put it over there. But as someone had mentioned in the past, the belt gives clearance issues. I mean I could probably still make it there, but it's not as fun. I mean it's more direct over here. If you went straight from that point to the turbo here, it's more direct. Uh, so I do have another cover I had made, or excuse me, I had welded a, a bung onto. So I had this other cover set up, welded up, taped on another fitting, dash 10 fitting to it. Now if I just get the opportunity to switch them out, I'll go ahead and pull that cover back off. I'm actually trying to weigh out between go ahead and starting it with this one, just running the line over there for now, and later on when I have more time putting this cover on, but I have the option there. And that's what I would suggest uh, anyone else to do, is to put that uh, drain on the passenger side. If I can get down here, I have a picture. Let me just show you the picture instead of trying to cram this camera down there. But I'll show you a picture. I have a picture that shows how much clearance there is on the passenger side versus the driver's side. While we're over here looking at the front of the engine, uh, it's an, another thing on my mind is I probably would have gone with truck accessories. I actually considered changing the front accessories from a truck now, but then I noticed how close my hot side is to these pulleys. Probably wouldn't work out, especially right there. But uh, truck accessories, easier to find, cheaper, and uh, you, what you got LS Simple makes a bracket to move the alternator for you. There's ways to work with the truck accessories, and kind of wish I would have done that. The alternator mounted up high like that. That was uh, in my previous update. You'll see the homemade bracket that I'm not real stoked about. I mean, it works, I guess. I haven't run it yet with it on there, but and I need a little bit higher. I don't have clearance for the alternator much back there. Something needs to be adjusted on it. I may wind up changing that out later. That's pretty much all of the updates under the hood on the 92 Camaro project. Uh, made a little bit of progress on the 8.8. .8. I'll go show you that. The biggest part of the progress on the 8.8 .8 for the 92 Camaro 
is uh, the torque arm mount. That's what this is here. Uh, you can find them. He used to sell them on LS1 Tech, but now he sells them on eBay. Uh, about 50 bucks. You got to put together like a puzzle. And then once it's together, you have it welded to the center chunk there. That's another part I wound up. I didn't trust my 110 welder. I wound up picking up a 220 welder and I need a 220 amp in here or excuse me outlet on the wall in here to finish some of this stuff up so it's been waiting yeah it may have been nine months since my last update video uh, that's not all I've done in nine months actually all of that right there was probably done in a month but I've had a lot going on since then uh, still I'm moving I'm in the process of moving I'm making trips I've probably got one more trip load of stuff to carry home to Texas uh, that's actually why I'm shooting this video. I'm probably going to carry the Camaro home on my next trip and I won't be able to touch it until December. So I wanted to get this update video out to y'all so you can see what the status of it currently is before I shipped it home and wouldn't have it around. I've had a lot going on, a lot of updates to give y'all and share with y'all. But I put this first for you third gen lovers because it's been so long since I had an update on it. I'm going to have to shoot another video here in a little while on updates of LS Fest and uh, the truck and everything that's going on. Give y'all a little, little hint though. I did order a larger can for the truck. That's it. That's all that I have for you. If you like what I'm doing and you want to see more, hit the like and subscribe button below. You'll get a notification each time I upload a new video. Hey, y'all have a great weekend. Be productive and keep on wrenching. Welcome back to your head. Today, I'm going to show you the cheapest, fastest, and easiest way to get your stock unmodified LS harness running on your next swap project.